I've always found red pigments difficult to use for some reason. I don't know why, but whenever I've painted a red subject, I tend to struggle with the paint. In this video, I'm going to share a few tips that helped me when I painted this cardinal in watercolour. Red pigments seem to cause me trouble. What I've found is that even though the pigment that I'm using is a staining pigment, it still tends to lift off the paper easily. When I paint, normally I like to start light and then to add detail, I begin to add layers. I re-wet the dry layer and then I work over the top with slightly darker pigment. That's how I do most of my paintings. When I work with red, I find that I need to modify that method slightly, otherwise I end up getting in a mess because the paint won't stay put for me. I don't know whether it's me, whether it's the paper I'm using or if it's the paint that I use. With the cardinal that I'll show you in this video, to avoid my past errors, I tried to get most of the work done in that first layer of paint. Because I was worried that if I was to re-wet areas to add more detail, I might disturb that first layer. So I worked fairly quickly and I varied the thickness of the paint in that first wash. In this video, you'll see me paint the bird in with basically just one wash on it. I go back and add a small amount of detail to a few little areas here and there, but most of the work was done in that initial wash stage. I used five Winsor & Newton colours. The main colour was Scarlet Lake. I also used some French Ultramarine, Burnt Sienna, a touch of Indian Yellow and some Lamp Black on those feathers around the beak. I used Ash Cold Press watercolour paper. This is watercolour board. It's really thick and it doesn't need to be stretched. Unfortunately, as far as I know, they don't make this paper anymore. The reference photo was taken by Patrice Bouchard and I downloaded it from Unsplash. I'd chosen Scarlet Lake as the main colour, but on the reference photo I could see an earthy pale violet colour on the tail and on the wing, so I knew I needed to mix that. A warm blue and a cool red will mix together to make a beautiful vibrant violet. I didn't want that though. I wanted an earthy, natural looking colour, so I was glad I had chosen Scarlet Lake for the main colour, and Scarlet Lake's a warm red. When I mixed that with the blue that I had chosen, French Ultramarine, that will give me the colour I'm looking for. French Ultramarine is a warm colour as well. I talk about the importance of knowing the temperature of the colours that you use in a video that I made last month. I was happy with that colour. So that was French Ultramarine mixed with Scarlet Lake. Okay, here's the beginning of the painting. I thought I'll section the painting off. I'll start with the head and I'll paint that in first. I'll dry that and then I'll work on the body. So I looked for an edge where I could stop the paint. I didn't want hard edges forming where I didn't want them. I worked on wet paper and I ended up taking the paint down onto the wing. I thought I could have a hard edge where the wing touched the body. I wet over the beak and I wet the area where the black feathers sit around the beak. I left the eyes dry though. Then I took that colour and I started to paint it onto the wing. I took it up along the side of the head as well. And then I switched to Scarlet Lake. I painted carefully around the eyes, but I took the paint over the top of the beak and the black feathers. I knew that it would be easier to paint over them than to try to paint carefully around them. And I also knew that the black paint that I put on the black feathers later would cover the red when I painted them in. I tried to paint as quickly as I could 
because I knew I wanted to put some darker red on here. This red paint has a little bit of water mixed with it and I've also got the water on the paper so that it's not full strength at the moment. Now before that red paint dried I picked up a bit more of the red. This time it's not as watery, it's got more pigment and I dropped that on the darker areas that I could see. Then I got my little liner brush and some more Scarlet Lake and I picked the pure pigment up straight out of the tube basically and I painted some longer directional strokes to represent the feathers on the top of the head. And then I painted on a bit more of that colour that I mixed with the French Ultramarine and Scarlet Lake here on the side. I allowed that area to dry and then I started to paint in the body. This area I knew that I needed to paint it all in quickly and I was aware that I only really had one chance at it. I knew that if I had to add more to it later then I risked disturbing the dry pigment and I knew I'd make a mess. The first washes are always the freshest anyway so I was determined to get most or all of the work done in this first wetting of the paper. The right hand side of the bird is lighter than the left hand side so here I've dipped my brush in my water container to take some of the paint off. Then I picked up some Indian yellow on my brush to make it a bit more orange and to add some interest. I could see a water line starting to form so I used my damp brush there to paint over it. I've just picked up a bit more Scarlet Lake and I was starting to paint around the toes but it was too difficult so I ended up painting straight over the top of them. It gave me a nicer edge along the top of the branch. Painted a few little flicks off here as well near the wing. And I didn't like this hard edge here so I got some more Scarlet Lake and I painted over the top of the dry paper on the wing there just to make that edge look a bit better. It's still wet. I picked up a bit more pigment and I dabbed that on in the darker areas. This is virtually straight out of the tube. I've just wiped my brush over the pigment that I've got squirted out. Here I've got an edge forming again, so I use my brush to clean it up. And I dropped in a bit more pigment there. Then I went back to this edge and fixed it up. I left the body to dry and I painted in the tail. I used the mixture of Scarlet Lake and French Ultramarine here. I thinned it with water slightly so that it wasn't too dark and I painted it on dry paper. I painted in the bottom of the little wing feathers and then I got some Scarlet Lake and painted in that section there. It bled into the violet mixture. And for interest I painted some Scarlet Lake onto the tail feathers as well. The paint's still wet so the two colours blend together. It's a bit dry there so I just picked up a bit more water on my brush. And then I went back to the head and I used some more Scarlet Lake. This time I'm on dry paper just adding a little bit of detail here and there. I wanted a little bit of detail on the side of the head here to indicate some feathers 
So I used some Scarlet Lake there on the dry paper and then I softened the edge with my damp brush. I also painted in the bottom beak there. I wet it first and then put a bit more Scarlet Lake on it. I got a bit more pigment and painted it onto the center part of the head there. That's on dry paper as well. It's full intensity pigment, so it's quite dark. And then I took the paint out of my brush and used it damp to spread it out. And I'm painting very gently so that I don't disturb the underwash underneath. I was determined not to do too much extra work. I didn't want to fuss with it. Using my damp brush there, trying to smooth away edges. Then I wet the top beak with some water and I painted on some Scarlet Lake. I left the lighter underwash showing in places so I didn't completely cover it with this darker pigment. Time for the black feathers now. Here I've got some lamp black that I'm painting on the dry paper. I've watered it down slightly. I want to come back over the top with some more pigment. I want to make it darker in a few places, but I don't want it too dark to begin with. Once I painted that first layer in, I needed to dry it with the hairdryer so that I could re-wet it with water. This is a little saucer where I keep my lamp black paint. It's gone hard on the palette. So to get it really dark, all I do is wipe my wet brush over the top of the hard paint. Here I've re-wet the paper with water and I'm using that darker pigment. I'm painting it on here and there and I'm leaving some of the lighter underwash showing in a few places. I've learnt to do that over the years when working with black. I never put it on too dark to begin with. I can't actually see any tonal variation on those black feathers on the reference photo, so I'm making it up. I know that it would look better if there's some tonal variation in the black area. So you can see I've left some of the lighter underwash showing there. Here I've got a grey watercolour pencil and I'm adding a bit of grey to the side of the beak. Put some around the outside edge of the eyes as well. I put some on the tip of the beak as well. And then I use my wet brush to spread it out a bit. I haven't finished the eyes here. I come back later and do more work to them. I also painted some of my violet mixture onto the bottom beak where it touches the top beak, just to create a bit of a shadow there. I wet the paper first though so that the paint would bleed. I used my Rosemary & Co Eradicator brush to take a bit of paint off here and there to create some highlights. I use the brush wet and the paper's dry and then I use a tissue or paper towel to take the paint off. The brush loosens the pigment. Since I discovered these little brushes I use them all the time. I think on just about every single painting I do. I've put a link for them in the description of the video if you'd like to try them out for yourself. With the tail feathers, I needed to darken some of them and leave lighter edges on them. So I drew in the lines that I needed and then I wet each section with some water and I used the colour that I mixed to wash it in with. That was the Scarlet Lake mixed with French Ultramarine. Here I'm wetting that little middle section with some water and then I pop the paint on. I wanted it darker at the top and then I faded the colour out at the bottom a bit more. And you can see I've left lighter edges on all of them. I 
When I did the line drawing, I curved my branch up a bit. It was quite straight and angular on the reference photo, so I wanted to soften the look of it slightly. Here I'm wetting the branch with water because I want to work on the wet paper again. I wanted a grey for the branch, so I mixed some burnt sienna into French ultramarine. And I painted that onto the wet paper. I wet the paper because I wanted soft paint edges and I wanted to leave some of the white of the paper showing. I want to paint loosely and get it on there quickly without fussing with it. I also want to concentrate the colour near the bird. So as I move away from the bird on the branch, I'll have less paint on my brush. And while that was wet, I dropped in some of the violet mixture that I used on the tail. That was the French ultramarine and scarlet lake. And it was still wet enough for me to get some more of the grey paint, darker this time with more pigment, and I ran it along the bottom edge, trying to make it look a little more rounded, less flat. I put these extra colours mainly near the bird where it was sitting on the branch. I also ran a little bit of it along the top edge there. I decided to darken the tail near the branch to create a shadow, so I wet the entire tail with water first. That wetting of the tail there also allowed me to soften some of those hard paint edges. And then I used the Scarlet Lake French Ultramarine mixture again, but I've got more pigment this time, less water. You can see it's quite a bit darker. So I painted that on under the branch and let it bleed over the paper. Then when I had enough paint on the paper, I took the paint out of my brush. I used it just damp to feather that paint down a bit more. And that gave me a shadow there underneath the branch. It looks fairly dark there because the paint's wet, but it did lighten quite a bit once it had dried. I painted in the feet once the branch had dried and then I went back to these black feathers I wet them with water again and I put a bit more black paint on them. There was a couple of areas that I wasn't very happy with, so I fixed that up. And then I was finished. So there it is there. It didn't take too long. It was a couple of hours, I think, that it took me to paint. Thanks for watching. If you've got any tips for using red paint, I'm all ears. Let me know in the comments. Please give this video a like and make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you celebrate Christmas, I hope you have a wonderful day tomorrow and have a fabulous new year. Stay safe and I'll see you next year. Yeah? yeah. Good? Mm -hmm. Sure. Did I say watercolour too push? No. I re-wet and then to add detail. Did that make sense? Because I was worried that if I, yeah, don't remember what I was going to say. I used five Winsor & Newton colours.